I just came back from California where I picked up Coda number, th number three. And just like the other two cars, this is a bizarre electric CVT EDI prototype car. But unlike my other two Codas, this is also a Coda prototype with one small but very special difference and no vent. And yes, it's also filthy. I drove back from California through a snowstorm, but don't worry, I'll have it cleaned up before the next shot. Alley-oop! Eh, that's a marginal improvement. That's a trick I learned in NOM. If you haven't watched my previous video where I talk about these EDI prototype cars, you should go watch that now, because if you don't, a lot of what I'm about to say won't make any sense at all. I'll link to it in a thing in the corner. Since I made that last video, I have spoken to someone who used to work at not only Coda, but also EDI, and he's filled in some knowledge gaps. For instance, in the last video, I postulated that EDI was using these Codas strictly as development platforms, and they weren't planning to convert and sell actual Codas. Well, I was on the right track. EDI was indeed using these Codas strictly as development platforms. By the way, they had seven of them, but they weren't planning to convert and sell anything. They were developing kits, so anyone could convert their ordinary car to an electric car with a CVT. As if anyone would want to do such thing. But those conversion kits never came to fruition because the customer, the Dongguan Research Institute, which ordered these bizarre kits, ran out of money. So those kits never came out of the development phase, and the only thing EDI had left over from this project was seven codas that they made worse, and some experience that they used to further the company later on. They mostly moved on to medium and heavy duty trucks. Now that's not the only information he gave me, that's just the big picture stuff. He also told me several stories about his time at EDI when these cars were in active development. For instance, he said one of the earlier hydraulic pumps that they tried had a propensity to catch fire and burned up one of the cars. Also, one of the Jinjing motors in the test cars exploded, catastrophically failed. He also has some of the computers that are missing from these EDI prototype cars. So whenever I get around to dismantling these cars, probably this white one here that I've dubbed the Maserota, I'm going to send him all of the EDI specific components out of this car because he wants to recreate one of these bizarre electric CVT EDI prototype cars just for his own keepsake, for funsies. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this third Coda is another EDI prototype car. It's got the hydraulic motors, the CVT, the weaker Xinjing motor, the Simicron inverter, all that jazz, just like the other prototype car. Now this blue car does seem to be a slightly earlier prototype than this white car here because the box in the trunk that has the motor controllers for the hydraulic pumps and the second DC to DC converter is just raw spot welded steel that's not finished and the air conditioner in this car isn't hooked up, but broadly these two are the same EDI prototype cars. Also, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a Coda prototype as well. It was never an issue to VIN and it has one big difference aside from the silly lettering on the side. It's the battery pack. Production Codas, like my daily driver here, have a 31 kilowatt hour battery pack. This car has a 36 kilowatt hour battery pack. And the only difference in battery configuration between this battery pack and the one that's in production cars is that the production 31 kilowatt hour battery pack has six of these little LiPo 4 cells in parallel, and this battery pack has seven. As you can see, that makes the battery pack a fair bit wider. You can actually see it from the side of the car. It peeks out a little bit, which helped me understand why the skid plate on my car doesn't look right. It's because it's not for this car. It's for the car with a 36 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it encapsulates something that isn't there on my car. As I said in my Coda introductory video, Coda was developing the 36 kilowatt hour battery pack to offer as an upgrade option, but the company went out of business before that car ever went on sale. But now it's my understanding that Coda developed the 36 kilowatt hour battery pack first. But because this battery pack is so wide, they had trouble making it meet crash safety standards, particularly in the side impact is my understanding. So as a compromise and to be able to actually sell cars, they reduced the size of the battery pack to 31 kilowatt hours, which made it narrower, allowed them to increase the structure on the sides of the batteries, which allowed them to pass those crash safety standards and sell cars to the public. And while the cars were being sold, they were going to continue development on this larger battery pack and offer it as an option later. But as I said, the company went out of business before that happened. Using the EPA estimated range of 88 miles for the production Coda, that would give this Coda with its larger 36 kilowatt hour battery pack an estimated range of 102 miles, theoretically. Not a huge leap, but that's 14 extra miles. But sadly, this slightly larger battery pack was never offered to the public. 
Not like it would have made a difference anyway. From what I've heard, Coda was pretty much doomed from the beginning with all sorts of money and other problems. For instance, I've heard from two different people that Coda did a hostile takeover of the battery manufacturer they were working with. Apparently, they put them in all kinds of debt to the point of bankruptcy and then bought them out. What a really nice way to run a business. So anyway, what do I want with this car? Another broken Coda. Well, for one, free Coda. I'm not gonna turn that down, but also the battery pack. I want to swap the battery pack out of this car and put it into my daily driver Coda because I just have to have that juicy extra 14 miles of added range. Do you know how far that would get me? Well, 14 miles. Obviously that swap wouldn't be about the end result, although that little bump would be nice. It would be about the experience. It sounds like a fun project to do for me, so I want to do it. Now that's all assuming that the battery pack in this car is any good. It has been sitting for quite a while, and any of the computers or modules that would communicate state of charge to anything on the dash for me to see are missing, so I can't tell what the state of charge is or really anything else about the car. I do have this edge of pack connector here with pinouts for CAN, so I can hook this up to a computer and read CAN outputs and tell what the state of charge is, but I haven't done that yet because, well, frankly, I don't know how. I've never worked with CAN before, but I'm sure I'll figure it out one of these days when I'm super bored or just want to know the state of charge on this thing. I need to figure out CAN anyway. So that's Coda number three, the car with an interior so gross I have not shown it to you in this entire video, and the completion of my crappy Coda collection. I've got a lot of big projects planned with these two cars, but it'll be a while before I get to them because I have a lot of other projects ahead of them. For instance, my daily driver Coda needs new wheel bearings. Again! Thanks for watching.